Hello everybody, today we're going to unbox, take a close up look and test the Norbase remote controlled stunt car. So let's first take a look around the outside of the box. So this is a 2.4GHz radio controlled 4 wheel drive stunt car which has some level of waterproofing and it's able to spin as well as roll. So you can see the list of features on the bottom row of the box packaging. And here is a close-up look at some of its features and product details as well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and open up the box by, of course, cutting apart the sticky film or sticky tape that's holding the box lid down and just making sure that we've cut the right parts of the box or tape now we can pull that tab out and then flip open or up the box lid to reveal the Norbase 2.4 GHz remote controlled stunt car sitting pretty in the box right here. Okay, so we start off by, of course, removing the contents from the box one by one and laying them down on the tabletop so you can see clearly the contents that are included with the remote controlled car. Okay, and just setting that down and always double checking, making sure that there's nothing else left inside of the box. Okay, we can set the box to one side, close it down, and of course, finding a spot somewhere on the tabletop to leave the box. There we go. So now just making a quick rearrangement of the contents here so you have a nice and central look here of the accessories as well as the components that have come with the Norbase remote controlled stunt car. So let's first start off by taking a look at this sheet here. So there is what appears to be a user manual or user guide for the remote controlled stunt car. Okay, so I'm going to give you a close-up look right now, so you can see the user instructions on how to operate this stunt car. Okay, as detailed on the box lid that we saw earlier, this vehicle does do 360 degree spins as well as rolls. So now let's set the user guide to the side and moving on to the next item. There's a little packet here containing some various bits and bobs. So let's open it up to see what's in there. So just cutting the sticky tape very carefully and then unwrapping the clear plastic wrapper and just tipping the contents out very carefully and setting the plastic wrapper to one side and so these are the contents that will contain within that wrapper okay so what appears to be a battery pack on the left that will probably go into the remote controlled car as well as a USB charger that I believe would be for charging up the battery right here on the left hand. Okay, so nice good look to the battery pack and USB charger for it. 
And just to give you some idea of the size, I'm going to rest it in the palm of my hand right there. For some perspective, just holding my hand up against the remote controlled stunt car. And then of course giving you that close up look once again as to the specifications or product details right there. Okay, so now setting the battery and USB charger to one side, you can finally move on to the remote control itself. So very light in weight, extremely light in weight. So it's not going to be an issue when it comes to um, your hand size and in terms of the weight being an issue when it comes to handling this remote control. So I'm giving you an all round look right here to the various aspects of this lightweight plastic remote control. So we're giving you that full rotation right there. And of course, an upright view as well. And of course, taking a look at the front of the remote control. And the underside or back of it as well. As you can see, there is a battery cover here. Which is screwed down with a Phillips screw. And just to give you some idea of the size once again in the palm of my hand right there. Nice, good view. And as I mentioned, very lightweight, so it's not going to be tiring to handle. And size-wise, you can see, not too bulky at all. And material-wise, tough plastic. And you can see the buttons as well. Very clicky. So, and there's a wheel as well. This is spring loaded, as you can see right there. And there's a on off switch right there as well. Okay, so nice good look all around. Not quite sure these triggers, they don't really click. However, these buttons do, as you can hear me pressing and the clicks going off as I press them. Okay, so that's the remote control for the Norbase remote control stun car. Let's set it down. Now it looks super tiny now. Set it down on the tabletop right here. And we can move on to the remote control car itself. So as you can see, let me make some quick and slight adjustments to the background so we can have a nice, clear, unobstructed view of the remote control car or vehicle. So here, maybe just a little bit more right there. Okay, so nice good view now. And weight wise, there is quite a bit of weight on this and you can see the wheels are super large and offset or staggered with the smaller front wheel and a much larger rear wheel and the back of the unit right here as well. And then just turning around, so we're looking at the right hand side of the stunt car. And then the front view as well. So a nice all round good look. So looking directly at the stunt car. And now you can see that the top and bottom are reversible or changeable. There we go. And remember, this is a four wheel drive vehicle. So all four wheels have control. So the rear of the unit and the front as well and giving you the offset look as well.
so the degree offset look right there and this way as well with the green black and red accents and flipping it around now we're looking at the red and black and slightly silvery accents right there and size wise as you can see it's a fairly large unit not overly large but there is a slight bit of weight to it so nice good look to the side profile and we'll slowly rotate it right around so you have a very thorough view and look at the Norbase remote controlled stunt car okay so we've seen all the close-up details and now just looking at the tracks or tires of the vehicle or car you can see these are pretty grippy looking tracks or treads however the wheel itself the black parts is entirely solid right there so the grip will come from these red strips of tires so basically bicycle tires on oversized rims in the real world kind of analogy right there so giving you once again that close-up look as I run my index finger along this rubber strip right here which is the tire of the vehicle okay and of course there is an on off button at the top of the vehicle or actually underside of the vehicle depending on which way you orientate yourself and there appears to be a water spout kind of slider switch not quite sure what that's about but it seems to be pretty solidly stuck on but there we go so we open that up and I'm definitely not sure what that does always refer to the user manual or use instructions as I always say before attempting to operate any such electronic devices okay so there we go so QC pass as well interesting and nice to see that quality control check sticker right there so now let's go ahead and of course power it up let's turn the power on and of course see what happens without the remote control being powered either and of course you can see it's not coming on because we've not put the batteries in it just yet so let's figure that one out how we get the batteries in the unit okay so let's set the toy down first of all and of course bring a screwdriver a Phillips head screwdriver to remove what appears to be the battery compartment so just showing you the screwdriver head right there and undoing the Phillips screws so as you can see this is necessary being that this vehicle is or has some level of waterproofing so these screws are there to make sure that the battery compartment is properly sealed up and I'm just going to pop this lid up here as you can see to reveal another section right there and let's unscrew that part as well and being careful not to drop 
the screw as I did. And then setting that part down and just let me pick up that screw which I've just or dropped just then and replacing it right there. And now giving you a close-up look to that battery compartment right there. So now let's fit that battery in and see if we can get it going. So always a little bit tricky with a camcorder and tripod in the way. But let's see how we manage with this connection right there. So making sure that we're in the right orientation right there. Clicking in, as you can see, nice and simple. And of course, replacing the battery in it and closing everything back up. So let's do it and see if we can manage to do it with the minimal fuss. Okay, so battery goes in this way because there is a slightly depressed section in there and now that cover will go in nicely. Okay, so just tightening up the parts here. And of course, this is a little bit of garnish just to keep and maintaining the design and overall look. of the remote controlled vehicle. Just gonna do it quickly. And just not gonna over tighten it too much. As you can see, it is now back in place. The battery cover or the main battery plate of the remote controlled car. And now next thing is to open up the battery compartment of this remote control. And on the remote control side, there aren't any batteries supplied with it. So what we'll need to do is of course, find some batteries and put it in. So right there, I'm gonna give you a look into the battery compartment. So it does take two double A batteries, as you can see, clearly indicated within the, or inside the battery compartment itself. So I do have a pair of Amazon Basics pre-charged rechargeable batteries, which I've unboxed in my channel before. Let's, of course, pop them in and get them going. And it's nice to see, they almost have the same color scheme as well. So that's the first one in. And now popping in the second one. And before we do anything else, just making sure that it does actually light up right there. So the battery indicator red light is flashing away. And I think it's trying to connect with the remote control vehicle. And let's screw that screw back down Okay, so just a quick tightening of the battery cover right there. And now we can flip that switch on and see how we go with that. Okay, before we do anything, let's see if we can turn it on, pressing and holding. We should have checked before. Okay, so there is no light or indicator on that, but let's see if we can get the toy running. Perhaps the battery requires some charge. That's something we should have tested before plugging or replacing the battery cover. So let's find out. Pressing and holding down. Okay, you can see no activity right there. And of course, it is 
not responding with the remote control either. Okay, so now what we have to do is see if we can, okay, just start playing around with everything that we can around here to get it going. And now let's once again reopen the battery compartment, making sure that the battery is properly connected. So I think it is more of a battery charge issue. So there is no charge or power in the battery pack that I've plugged in. So let's remove these battery plates and then double check that the battery is properly connected. So you can see it's clipped in pretty nicely in there. And there we go. So the flip, the switch, as you can see, is not a button, it is an actual switch itself. So that's a bit of fussing around right there with this, what appears to be a button, which is actually a switch. So as I mentioned, always refer to the user instructions and hopefully that was covered in there. So not a button which you press, but it's an actual flip that is encased with a silicone cover. So that's the on position and that's the off position and it's not entirely clear as there is no click or visual indicator to show what position it's on. But nonetheless, it is now powered. Let's switch it off to make sure that it doesn't run away randomly and replace that battery cover. So there we go. Trials and tribulations when it comes to such toys or devices. So let's make sure that we tuck everything neatly in. And of course, replace that battery cover. So going through the motions again. Okay, maybe do it this way. There we go. Bit twisty right there, but now we have a more flushed placement of this battery cover. So I'm not going to over tighten it, just going to do it fairly quickly for the purposes of trying to keep this video short or not as long or not too long. So there we go. So just some simple tightening. And this one's not too flushed, but there we go. So covers back in place. The remote control is in the on position. Let's go back off on and of course now we flip the switch on here so remember it is a switch not a button and there's no audible clicks or feel but that's the only way that you can tell from that quick flutter or jut of the remote control vehicle and let's see what happens so now we are in action so we're steering it back and forwards and of course, the left hand side controls the steering and so does the right. So if we want to go right, press on the upper right. Oh, actually, seems to be doing the reverse. So let's see. So going left, you want to press on if you want. Let's say this again. Let's try this again. Let's figure this one out. And there we go. We just dropped it, but it is a stunt vehicle so it's designed for quite a bit of abuse or maybe just let's turn it up this way so it makes more sense perhaps so now it is going in the correct direction so now if we want to go right hmm now let's see 
not quite sure what this little scroll wheel or wheel does, but let's mess around with it, see what we can figure out here. Okay, as we can see now, with the green part of the vehicle showing at the top, pressing on this left bottom button goes left, steers it left, and of course that will steer it right on the bottom right. However, let's see what it does now with the top buttons. So top button steers it in the reverse motion. So reversing right and reversing left over there. Obviously we have quite limited space on this tabletop, so we're not going to be able to do too much, but I'll try my best here. So I'm gonna press on the top left button, press and hold on the top left button now. And you can see it does reverse towards the left and of course on the opposite side of the remote control that would reverse it towards the right right there as we can see and then if we want to steer it right or left it's the left or right buttons right here so there we go very easily right there and reversing obviously it's reached the end of the tabletop but there we go so tight space here to be playing around with such a zippy and large remote control toy but you can see it's just happily doing this thing and it's just dropped off the tabletop so i'll have to pick it up but this thing is definitely built for some abuse as you can see pretty tough and it's back in action hopefully <laughs> and here we go it's just steering away right there and see if we can get some things going so these two top two buttons do not appear to be doing anything. They're just dead buttons, even though, even though they do have a bit of play in them, unless I'm doing it wrong. As I've mentioned, always my disclaimer is to always refer to the user instructions or user manual before trying to play or operate any such devices. So over there, nothing happens. And these green things are accents as well. And as for this kind of steering wheel i'm not quite sure what it does there okay but nonetheless the buttons that seem to be controlling the remote control car is these four buttons at the top one two three four okay and if you want to spin the vehicle you just press on the opposite diagonal opposites of, of the remote control and I'm not quite sure now how we go about flipping it now that's that's the real trick of this remote controlled vehicle so let's see if we can do that now let's have a quick look at the user instructions to see if we can get it to flip. Okay, we've got the basics covered. Okay, so it says when the red side up, press the backwards button first and then press forwards button quickly. The car will flip over. When the green side's up, press the forward buttons first and then press the back buttons quickly. The car will flip. Okay. So what we want to do, press the forward buttons and then press the backward buttons quickly. Um, let's get it into the green orientation and see if we can do that. Let's find out. So forward and then back quickly. So forward and back. Okay, uh, maybe that's not quite forward. Well, let's figure this one out. Definitely not seeing any flipping at all. Okay, so that's that. <laughs> uh, in terms of flipping, not seeing any flipping. But we can of course spin it or rotate it. No problems there with the diagonal controls. 
pressing and holding on to them and of course so there's quite a bit of learning when it comes to controlling the vehicle especially if you somehow manage to flip it which I can't seem to be able to do so if you're looking at the other side of the vehicle your buttons will be reversed in terms of the maneuvering of the vehicle right now as you can see controlling in the exact opposite right now so best to keep it orientated with the green right there so it kind of makes sense forward and reverse right there while just a bit of learning to do right here and rotating so done like that and like that and of course let's steer it back into the screen right there so that's the Norbase remote controlled stunt car thanks for watching and happy controlling